Okay, we're back here in the Cube on the floor. We're here in Cloud City. Thanks to everyone in the studio, we're here. We're bringing all the action from the floor. Danielle Royce is about to welcome. We've got a great remote interview. Obviously it's a physical event, but it's virtual, so it's a hybrid event. And people are coming in remotely. We've got Mark Collins, Senior Vice President, Commercial Product Management, Zephyr Tell. Uh, Mark, thanks for coming on. You head up the product management, you're responsible for the product vision. Calling in or remoting in from Ireland, great to see you, wish you were here. Thank you, John, I wish I was there too. We had a great ch uh, chat yesterday with Michael, the CEO, and the company. Public cloud is a big driver of what you guys are part of. It's a sea change. For some of the world, it's an obvious shift. It's been going on for a long time. In telco, it's new. What's, yeah, what's the absolutely. story? Give us the vision of the product. So, Zebratel are actually a provider of multiple products within the telco space. And one of our visions is very much about bringing those products into a marketplace capability that telcos can start engaging and interacting with them much more simply than they would have been with their vendor suppliers in the past. What's the difference between cloud um, on, on premises and, and in the public cloud for telcos? What's the, what's the psychology right now of telco? Most people have lifted and shifted and replatformed with the cloud uh, and the enterprise side. Certainly that's been going on for many, many years. Now you're seeing people refactor their business in the cloud and get really knit new advantages, not just cost optimization and benefits with the replatforming or lift and shift, but they got new capabilities. Where's the yeah. telco uh, adoption on this spectrum of replatforming and refactoring with public cloud? Early, they toe in the water, are they jumping in? What's happening? I think very, very early. Like I've worked in the telco space for the last 20 years and certainly for the last five, all of the buzz has been about moving to cloud native solutions. But a lot of the telco vendors that are out there are still very much looking at how they supply solutions in private cloud or even on-premise deployment. Like they haven't changed that mentality of how they actually provide a solution in public cloud. Okay, we got, we got DR just walk in. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Letting the You're folks fine. know that we got the big entourage here in Cloud City. Danielle Royston is the CEO of Telco DR and the CEO of Tatogi. And you start to see the Telco DR, DR being Digital Revolution or Danielle Royston, however you want to look at the DR part of it, but really a game changer in the Telco industry. Put a real dent in the universe here with Cloud City. Danielle Royston, just a little entourage there and a cheer for her coming back to her home base here at MWC in Cloud City, where the Cube is and where the main stage is. Mark, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, continue. So, you know, are they are they there? Are they jumping in? Is there is there fear? Uh, are they building? Are they just still operating? We just had a little segment discussing like the difference between being a builder versus an operator, like the confluence of you know wartime and peacetime. <laughs> I, I, I actually think there's a lot of fear. Like I think if you look at the way telcos look at cloud, one of the biggest blockers that I think a lot of them face is that they have this perception that their network and what they provide as a solution to customers is a stable business model. Like there's been very little impetus from the outside to force them into replacing some of their outdated core technologies and they have some very, very legacy views on how they model TCO and the future costs to their business, which unless they change those attitudes, some of what they can benefit from the public cloud is going to be lost on them. You mentioned legacy. One of the things I want to get your thoughts on quickly is that the notion of, it's always been a customized game. I call it the OT world, you know, operating technology versus IT information technology. Different mindsets. One's you know, very IP driven, you know, right software, open source now drives that. But you have a lot of legacy and they build custom solutions when the world seems to be spinning towards open and standardized. What's your take? Yeah, I see that as a huge challenge when you look at what telcos want from a software perspective. Like they, they want products, but they still have this huge expectation that their specific needs are going to be addressed, right? And, and the challenge I see there is that when you talk about customization, most of the time that drives a divergence away from what a product is to a bespoke solution, which creates a huge number of issues for service providers when it comes to how they do upgrades in the future, or for that matter, what they ultimately have to pay the vendors for the professional services to build those customizations. Talk about the uh, telco's considerations for interfaces, how they should handle you know, interfaces and other um, standards, because you know, it's an API economy, we know that, but now as things start to get more interconnected, integration's going to be a big thing, especially with the edge becoming much more of a competitive 
and dynamic, and people care about the edge, because it's consumer, it's education, it's healthcare, it's not just you know, some device on a network, it's actually you know, societal impact, social change, real value. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Like, and, and you could probably credit telcos for what's been the way of the normal for a network in the last 20 years with regards to all of the standardization that's happened in bodies like 3GPP. But I guess in the IT world or in the domain of how you actually deliver capabilities to your end customer or even the experiences that you develop for your consumers, a lot of that has been bespoke development, software plugged together, built on premise and not necessarily taking advantage of the openness that you see on the RAN and on the network side of things. Mark, I want to ask you while I have you here, I know we've got a couple minutes left, but I want to get your thoughts on this. Since it's been since February 2019, since Mobile World Congress had an event. So, you know, in dog years or internet years, whatever you want, metaphor you want to use, it's been a long time um, and a lot of time has passed. What's your assessment of where the industry is? I think all you have to do is look back at the last year and a half and see the sea change that has happened in a huge amount of industries around how they've reacted to the ability to deliver new capabilities very quickly on the back of what happened to us with COVID. And I think telcos in a lot of cases have been at the forefront of providing network experiences for people as they move to working from home but they haven't necessarily had the same agility or the same ability to make change when it comes to the customer experiences and the products and services that they build on top. And I think they need to take advantage of what everybody else has been able to do with public cloud in the last year. Yeah, and I think infrastructure as code changes everything. DevOps, which is a cloud term, is development and operations. They have to work together. Now it's DevSecOps. So you, I think mm -hmm. the same thing's going to happen to telcos. And, I'm a, big, I'm, I'm a big fan and bullish on the telco's business model because if you embrace the change, if you ride that wave, and right, you're not going to be driftwood. And that is all about keeping the change going and keeping it, keeping it real relative to the value because telco saved us during COVID. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so you know, the operational aspect of the, of the network didn't crash. We had some bad Zoom meetings here and there, but for the most part, people lived and they survived. Yep. So you got to give props to that. And that's the purpose. Now it's the next level. Edge yeah. applications have to come on board faster. We need more software. What's your, what's your, how does that happen in your mind? I think a lot of that has to come from vendors like ourselves who start providing a different way and a different approach for how operators can consume the software that they purchase, right? Like if they keep working with the same vendors that they have today, they'll spec their requirements, they'll write down what they need and they'll ask somebody to build it for them. And that'll take a long time. By the time they've actually got it built, it'll probably be the wrong thing or life will have moved on if you look at the pace of change that we've seen in the last year with COVID and everything else. And I think a cloud specialist vendor like ourselves can come and provide a huge amount of value to an operator when we're building a solution that many operators can consume within our marketplace of products. Awesome, Mark, great to have you on. 30 seconds left, put a plug in for Zephyrtel. What are you working on? You hiring, you got 30 seconds, go. We're hiring, we're growing, we're presenting a number of different solutions in Mobile World Congress, looking at both customer experience and IoT in a number of different areas where we're heavily involved. Absolutely, come seek out the people from Zephyrtel that are there and look at the demos and the, the, meet with the guys on the ground. They've got a huge amount of information to share. Awesome, Mark Collins, Senior Vice President, Pro Commercial Product Management, really changing the game, making service providers get the value from the network and making it easy for having meaningful change that's positive impact, changing the world, and really making it happen. Of course, let's send it back to the studio, Adam and the team. <laughs>